an architect of friendship. That's how the great art patron Agnes Gunn described my friend and mentor Terry Riley. And with good reason. So the first time I met Terry was when I had to take this photograph. Well, I didn't have to. I was asked to take this photograph by the magazine Miami Modern Luxury. And I hadn't met Terry before, but I knew that he had been the head curator at the Museum of Modern Art for Architecture and Design, and that, you know, in my world, he was a big deal. So I knock at the door at Terry's house in the Miami Design District, but Terry doesn't answer the door. His bloody dog does. But this dog, his name was Max. He was a rescue dog, and he was legendary. And he answered the door, the dog, and he came out bumbling all over me, and he, He's so forceful, he pushes me to the ground, and the next thing I know, this dog is licking my face, you know. And it's like, I haven't even started the photo shoot. My camera bag's over here, the tripod's over there, and there's Terry in the background. And I'm like, oh my goodness, what an introduction, you know. So um, I brush myself off, and I pull myself up, and I say, very nice to meet you, Mr. Riley. He says, oh, don't call me Mr. Riley, I'm, my name's Terry. I say, hello, Terry, it's nice to meet you. And anyway, he ushers me into his beautifully designed house, which is this gorgeous courtyard design that was inspired by the great architect Mies van der Rohe. And on one side of the house, he's got the living room and the kitchen, and then the courtyard had this nice little pool with a bridge over it, and on the other side are two bedrooms. It's beautifully designed. And uh, anyway, I'm uh, congratulating Terry on his design, and uh, his partner, then partner, John, is there. And I have to take this photograph of Terry, and I don't want to do something that's formal, you know. And I said, well, why, why don't we include the dog, Terry? He says, great, you know, takes, takes the emphasis off of me. So we let the dog run free, you know. And uh, he, he's, like, diving into the pool, and he's creating a commotion. And uh, eventually I get to one end of the pool, and... Terry's at the other end, and uh, they start playing together, and that's when I start shooting the pictures off. Because he's not, Terry's not thinking about the camera anymore, he's just playing with the dog. And I'm getting these really nice, like, human pictures, uh, well, human and dog pictures that uh, kind of show Terry for who he really was, which was this architect of friendship, you know, he was a, he was a nice guy. With a big portfolio. And uh, so uh, Terry and I, we kind of continued the conversation for the next 15 years, really, and he became my favorite client because of this reason. Terry would say to me, you know, Robin, I like your photography, but what I want you to do is I want you to go to my uh, design, the, my building that I designed, and I want you to interpret it for me. And he wouldn't even go so far as to show me the plans or anything. He just trusted me 100%. So I got on with that, and uh, he enjoyed the fact that uh, I was able to de deliver him what he wanted. Uh, and it was really partly due to the trustworthiness factor, which I guess is you know, the most important fact in, in, a, in a friendship and, and in, in fact, in a business contract. So uh, the years passed on, and uh, the second thing that I worked on with Terry was the Perez Art Museum in Miami. And Terry was very friendly with Jacques Herzog and Pierre de Mouron of the great architecture company, Herzog and de Mouron. And uh, without Terry, the, the building probably wouldn't have happened. Uh, but it did happen and became this world-class facility uh, that has now garnered a worldwide reputation. And a lot of that was due to Terry's influence in the world of architecture and art and design. And of course, that coincided with my specialty, which is architecture, design, and fine art. But uh, I was making a film for Pam, and I asked Terry if he wanted to, uh, to appear in the, in the video. He said, yeah, sure, I'd like to do that. And here's Terry in his own words uh, during the video that we made for Pam. Well, um, Beth Dunlap, who's the architecture critic for the Miami Herald, uh, made the observation that the classicists love the building because they think it's classical, the modernists love the building because they think it's modern, and the regionalists love the building because they think it's regional. Right. So after Terry had shepherded the opening of Perez Art Museum in Miami in 2013, 
He soon left as the director of the museum and he left to focus on the business that he had developed with John Keenan uh, way back in 1984. And uh, Terry was a highly skilled and sophisticated architect and people that knew him through the curatorship of the, his position at MoMA might not have known this, but he was a really very, very highly skilled architect. And he started working on this new building and it was called Museum Garage. Or is it garage? I don't know. People say garage or garage. I say garage. You say potato, I say potato. No, no, you say potato, I say potato. That's what it is. Don't say potato, say potato. It's garage, not garage. Okay. So he's developing this remarkable new building called the Museum Garage in the Design District. And uh, his patron is Craig Robbins, who, as you may know, is the major developer behind the design district. And instead of coming up with an ordinary parking garage, Terry gets this brainwave or brain fart, depending upon which way you look at it. And it's all based on this parlor game called Exquisite Corpse. Most famously, David Bowie used this when he used to write his lyrics. And this is what David Bowie used to do in the early 70s. He would write out lyrics to a song. But instead of like putting them in order, he would chop them all up with scissors, put them into a bowl, and then at random he would pick out the lyrics, and those lyrics would become the lyrics to the song, based on, you know, sacred geometry of chance, really. So Terry applies this philosophy to this building in Miami, and he gets these six different architects and designers together, and he asks them to come up with the facade of the building. And then he puts those designs into a hat and he pulls them out. And that was the order, the random order, which ended up becoming the facade of the museum garage. And probably, you know, Miami is the only city that you can get away with this, but what he developed was such a life-affirming, positive, enthusiastic building, you know, you really can't take your eyes off of it. It's a, it's a beautiful cartoon is what it is. And it was so out of the box for Terry because, you know, he was really a modernist, you know, who was... Uh, a disciple, really, of Mies van der Rohe, and less is more. But this building was like Morris Lapidus. Too much is never enough. So Terry hires me to photograph these buildings, and uh, this building, and uh, I had a lot of fun shooting this, this little baby. Uh, that was just one of many projects that he and I worked on together. And this was around about 2018 or so, uh, that that parking garage uh, was finished. And uh, Terry and I continued to meet. I shot another project of his, the De Jong House, which was the uh, building of the month or the house of the month in architectural record sometime back in 2019. And this is beautiful minimalist house in Coconut Grove, whose, uh, whose patron was Sonia, Sonia De Jong, who, who shared with Terry a less is more sort of perspective on life and architecture indeed. And uh, after that building was finished, you know, Terry called me up and he says, uh, Robin, I'm really happy with the, with the fact that it was Architectural Records Building of the Month. And uh, why don't you and Sonia come and join me for lunch? And I said, great, you know. And uh, so he bought us lunch, you know, at Mr. C there in the, uh, in the design district. And not every client does that, you know. And uh, after that, you know, COVID happened and uh, Terry didn't have a a great time during COVID. But in 2021, uh, I, had, I had got together with my friend Alistair Gordon and the great architect uh, Manuel Clavel Rojo. And the three of us had, had got together so that we could join Terry for lunch, you know, and we invited him over for lunch. And he said, you know, I'm not feeling so good, boys. Um, why don't you, there's the three of you go over to the design district and have lunch by yourselves, and I'll join you next time we get together. I said, okay, Terry, I'm really sorry to miss you, you know, but I hope you feel better soon. And then the three of us start talking, and I said, well, maybe we should go over and see if Terry's okay. And then I quickly interjected myself after that, and I said, you know what, maybe we shouldn't go and disturb him. Maybe he's not feeling very well. Well, that was a mistake, because... Three days later, Terry passed away. And, uh, you know, in hindsight, you know, you don't know when you're living in the moment 
whether something's right or wrong or you've made the right decision or not. But Terry passed away three days later and uh, I was really sad to see him go. As I know, many young architects and young artists and uh, people in my own profession were very sorry to see him go because that's what he did. He was an architect of friendship. He was able to take his position of authority in the culture and not brag about it, but just give you the information that he had learned over the years. And he gave it freely and honestly, and it really inspired me to continue with my career. So thanks very much, Terry. I hope it's peaceful up there with you, and uh, may you rest in peace. Thank you very much.